What's up guys, this is Flash Flutter. Excited to show you a new version of the VCI 400 SE mapping for Tractor Pro. This is the new version I just made, version 2.5. It's got some new cool features, something I'm calling freeze effects, which is kind of like the Echo Freeze, but uh, with four different versions of it. We have full control of remix decks. Now that they added that direct mapping control in there, so you can control all 64 cells in a remix deck through one of these guys. Um, some new basic looping control and a couple other features that I've changed around. Uh, excited to show it to you, so let's just dive in and take a look. Alright, so we're going to move right into the mapping now. We're assuming you've downloaded it uh, and have imported it in. And in case you haven't, just know you need to use this import button down here. Um, find the file wherever that is, and then you'll import it. Um, should look something like that. Then you'll import that. And you'll get, you should get a controller mappings and effect settings. You'll say okay. If this is the first time you've imported the mapping uh, or you're importing it from a different mapping, you're going to repeat this step and import it again after you've done it once. That's going to ensure that the effect settings load correctly, which sets the effects order in Tractor. Uh, and that's going to be important to make sure all the effects work. Otherwise, you might see the beat masher or commonly like the delay um, for the echo freeze or something triggering a different effect. Okay, so we've got that all down. So first, I'm going to pretty much just go over the areas of the mapping that have changed since version 2 uh, and also since version 1 for all of you guys who have used that and are just looking for what's different. So just to keep clear on terminology, I'm calling these sections over here kind of the grid section, the bottom sections over here, the tab section, because there's three tabs. You have a leftmost being red, these being green, and then you have um, a orange for uh, jog effects. Uh, we have our central kind of mixer EQ section that's as expected in our top section, which is just for effects and loop deck or remix deck control. Otherwise, everything is pretty self-explanatory. Oh, we also have the central section here, um, which I'll explain what that does in a second. So just to get right into it, the grid section, what has changed is only in the gratify section and the grid section. Slicer is still exactly the same. The cues is just your cue points, same as before. So the gratify, you still have top four all beat mashers, just real quick. And let's go earlier in here, show something. We have, oh. Okay, and then below it, now we have um, two gators, a slow gator. And a fast gator. We also have over here a reverb. And a delay. And these are just like what used to be over here and here. There's now no echo freeze there. Don't freak out, I'll explain. It has moved to somewhere else. Um, so that's the same. It's for people who have MIDI fighter mappings, it's pretty similar to what's on there. Um, in the grid section, this is completely different, and now it's for remix deck control. And so on the left side, it's gonna control remix deck C, and on the right side, it's gonna control remix deck D. And that's the same regardless of whether you're controlling deck A or C on this side, or deck B or D on this side. So, um, yeah, that's that. And then, um, so remix decks have four pages of 16 cells of samples or one shots. And here we're breaking it down into um, eight, um, into, into eight. So it's going to be eight pages of eight to make up 64. So how you're going to control that is if you hold in the grid section, you'll notice it's flashing here, and these are going to correspond to the different pages of the remix deck. So these first two are going to be the page one, these will be page two, page three, and page four. This being the top half, and this being the bottom half. So you can see um, here it's going to scroll to page two, page three, and page four, the same with any of these. And just to give you a quick example, um, so we say we're on the first half of page one, so kicks, snares, 
these sort of things and we can move it to um, something else. And to show you, I can go to the bottom half of that too. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now you have control of all 64 at once, which can be really nice and really powerful. Another thing you can do, which let's say if I throw in instead a, um, uh, or let's just, a, a remix deck that has a loop, you can also stop the slot by pressing shift and the button. So if I look at say, remix deck D, and I'm going to press this. Okay, so that's a pretty lame loop, but you can hear it anyways, it's going on. So if I want to stop, I can just press shift and either of these buttons in that slot, and it'll stop. But watch out if you press it a lot of times, because this is the command where it will stop it, but then if it's stopped, you press it, it will delete it, and if it's completely empty, it will load a sample from whatever's in um, the browse. So that can be handy, but just something to be mindful of. So that's pretty much it for the grid section. Um, you know, you can really control remix decks, that plus controlling the levels um, in from the loop decks feature, which is a quick reminder, if you press shift in any of these and both of them light up, now you're controlling kind of the uh, levels of the loop deck and you can mute or unmute them with this. Trigger, mute, unmute, that sort of thing. So that's cool. Then that's pretty much all that's changed in the grid section. Now what we have in the bottom tab section, which is different, is we have, so if I kind of play this again, jog effects are the same as you expect from before. Nothing different there. Okay, so yeah, that's straightforward. And we have in the loop section, this is now different. It used to be macro jog effects, it's now just loops. And it's been simplified, just be some basic loop controls where um, um, the first two, it's a, this is a loop in, this is a loop out, and these are just a loop size decrease and a loop size increase. And so we already know we have loop controls up here with these encoders, but it's kind of nice to have it on buttons, especially because with a loop in and loop out, you can create a loop without thinking of the length ahead of time. And also you can set a loop that's not on the grid um, or and not quantized. So as an example, say I wanna, I like that yeah, I wanna just grab that yeah. So you can see this is like not a quantized loop and I can grab it nicely and you'll see the light up to show, you know, that you, you grab the loop you can release that or alternatively I can, I can increase or decrease the size of that. So that's pretty cool. It's just another way to um, set loops, control loops. And the main difference here, which you're probably looking for, is the red, well, it's labeled here Q1 to 4 section, but it's what I'm calling the freeze effects mode. And what that basically is, is like the echo freeze and three other styles of effects that will freeze. So let's just grab uh, let's play this. And the first one is going to be the echo freeze, just as you'll remember it. And the thing you'll want to notice about these is when you press it down, um, or when you press it initially, it's going to activate the effect, but not freeze it yet. Just turn it on. So if you'll hear, when I press it, the first one is the delay for the echo freeze. You'll hear a delay on, but, and then, uh, but you won't hear the freeze until I release the button. So let's check this out. You can kind of hear the delay a little bit. It's not very pronounced on purpose. And when I release this button here, it's going to freeze. So you can hear that. That's kind of your typical echo freeze. But one of the nice features about this is that you can hold it down and you can choose the rate at which you want to do the effect. Say like, oh, I want to keep it, make a really long delay. See, so like that's really nice. Another thing alternatively you can do with this is say, you know, you just do your typical echo freeze. You can then change the rate of the effect ap after you've activated it. So I've got my freeze on like, so uh, I was kind of speeding up the rate there. And that's nice to give you flexibility with that. 
Now, so what you have is three other versions of that. You have a reverb, a tape delay, and a ramp delay. So the reverb, kind of like a, you can hear the reverb turning on, and it'll just be kind of like a, a reverb freeze after. You have that. Um, you can let that go. You have a uh, tape delay here. Do that when you look. You let it go. It's gonna kind of do a and do a little kind of build up or slow down with that. And that can be cool, like going into an, another drop or just segueing songs. And then last, we have a, a ramp delay, which when you release, is gonna kind of loop on it, and it's gonna do a similar thing to tape delay. We're gonna kind of like set a little loop thing, and you can. You can kind of do one of those sort of things, or like a, or a real slow down sort of thing. So that can be really cool and useful in transitioning, um, and uh, yeah, just play around with that and check that out. So that's the big difference for the freeze effects. The middle section up here, which is the other main different thing, is no longer the loop recorder, it is now an effects dry wet control. So these guys are all, instead of A, B, C, D, they're for effects one, effects two, effects three, and effects four. You can select one, zero, or up to all of them, and it will control the dry wet for those decks. So you can see right now I'm controlling one and three, and it's controlling the dry wet for both. Or I can do just one. This is really nice because when you can then make, when you're controlling effects, say in Gratify or um, in jog effects or anything, you can kind of fade them in and out at your liking um, and at your timing. Um, the other thing that's happened alongside this is that all the direct dry wet controls in the gratify, in the jog effects, in pretty much anywhere that has one, uh, with the exception of maybe freeze effects, have been taken out. So, for example, in the gratify, if I press beat mash, you can hear it now, but if I turn it all the way off, it's just going to turn on the effect. It's not going to turn on the dry wet. This allows me the ability to kind of to fade in the, the beat masher, which can be kind of cool, but you also need to be mindful of that so you remember it's not going to automatically turn it on. So those are the main changes of what's happened uh, in this mapping. Uh, I'll go over a, a few quick other things that uh, our new features I kind of added in just uh, under the radar, which I think are kind of cool. Um, and those would be if you want to control flux mode, say you can press shift, and you'll see how the flux mode are going to be the shift plus the headphone cue buttons. So right now you can see I have the headphone cue on for all decks. If I press shift, you can't, see, they all um, turn the lights off because this is showing you the flux mode control. So let's say. I'm going to turn flux mode on A, so that's on now. As you can also see by the, the hook arrow indicated next to the cup button on deck. So now if I press deck and I kind of scratch, you can see the cursor's going on to move forward or, you know, if I, if I want to press old Q points when I release them, it's going to go where to where it was in the track. So that can be really helpful. Turn that on or off. Another function I have here is say, um, say for example, I was playing some drums and you notice it's gonna keep playing the deck there. I wanted an easy way to play or cue a track in deck C or D without switching to it completely with this because uh, that can become a little cumbersome and messy. So I made it so if you press the headphone cue, um, the buttons above it will become the cue button and the play button. So I can press that essentially and turn it off, or I can turn it on. Um, that's really nice mainly for track decks. Sometimes you'll just load it in. It might already be loaded at a cue point or where you want to play it, and you just need to let it go, and then you can mix it in. You can do that easily this way. Another thing you can do uh, is if you're playing a deck, you can, can besides using the, the tempo fader to go up and down in tempo, you can make really fine changes by using shift plus the loop set can be really nice. If you want to make a, uh, cha a small change or a very gradual one. Um, 
This, you also have, you hold this in and you turn it, you can change the uh, fine change on the tempo master. It's only gonna matter if you're using up here, have this probably not set to auto and just be master. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna do anything. And the last thing is, if you wanna set a deck to tempo master, like say, I'm playing this guy, oh, I'm, up, I'm about to bring in this other guy, but I want the new guy to be tempo master, I'm gonna press shift and loop set, that's gonna make him the master. So now I can say, move his tempo, and it'll move both. Or I can go, ah, I want A to be master again, so I'll do that. And that's cool. All right, so that's pretty much all that's changed in here. Hopefully you enjoy the freeze effect and some of the new features. Um, and then, and if you have any comments, as always, please post them on maps.djtechtools.com on the mapping. I'll take a look at those and hopefully you enjoy um, DJing with this. And if you have any questions, feel free to find me on the internet. Until then, see you later.